Welcome back everybody to Forza Horizon 5 and today we're taking a look at the 2021 Mercedes AMG 1. Now this is a car still in its concept state but 275 units are planned with a price tag of 2.72 million dollars each. Now it has Formula 1 derived technology uh, while having a, a design that is primarily for aerodynamics with such aerodynamic features including the air, large air front air inlets, the roof mounted air intake and the large aerodynamic fin that extends down the back half of the car. It is made uh, entirely of carbon fibre. The wheels are made of aluminium and alloy and uh, carbon fibre and they are 19 inches at the front and 20 inches at the back and it has a 7 speed gearbox. Now the drivetrain on this car is quite complicated but the raw numbers are this 877 horsepower and 535 pounds feet of torque from a 1.6 litre turbocharged V6 engine plus four electric motors so uh, yeah that's quite a fair decent amount of power though though obviously being a concept car this might well turn out to have even more power and quite frankly it would not surprise me if it did and uh, yeah all in all it weighs around 3737 pounds which is not that m bad considering all the electric motors and all the uh, you know the electronic wizardry that is in this car so yeah one of those electric motors is attached to the crankshaft and is a curse unit that you get in Formula 1 so it gives you a uh, sudden boost of electric power to uh, you know surge you forward uh, and then it has one electric motor that is coupled to the turbocharger and the last two are connected to the front axle to give it an all-wheel drive drivetrain and uh, yeah, the first two uh, of those uh, electric motors are Formula 1 style motors responsible for recovering energy and improving efficiency during operation of the car. The first one serves to generate ele electricity during braking, so not only does it, you know, store the electricity, but you know, it provides better braking due to the regen. And uh, yeah, while the second serves to eliminate turbocharger lag and improve throttle response by keeping the turbine spinning at high speed. So. Uh, yeah, you've got all of the advantages of a uh, you know high-powered combustion engine with none of the drawbacks, and all of the positives of electric motors again with none of the drawbacks. And uh, yeah, the interior is also Formula One inspired with that steering wheel, and it's really rather minimalist uh, interior. So uh, yeah, but still, it's got LCD screen or LED screens, and uh, yeah, it's got decent looking seats with stitching in them. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, there's carbon fiber everywhere. Not a fan of these kind of steering wheels, I have to admit. Uh, I really don't imagine they'd be good for day-to-day -day driving, but then again, this is not the kind of car that will be day-to-day -day drive because, uh, yeah, not even the engine will last that long. It will have to be rebuilt and uh, reconditioned. Uh, so, yeah, it only lasts 31,000 miles as it's a very uh, high revving engine. And, uh, yeah, obviously it's also a really rather small V6, so, you know, the... Uh, Tolerances are very, very minimal with something that's, you know, six cylinders but only 1.6 litres in size. So, uh, yeah, that is no surprise. But, yeah, still, I really, really like the look of this car. I think it looks amazing. And, uh, yeah, it's easily one of the best looking Formula One inspired cars. And, uh, yeah, it's also got, you know, some usable aspects to it as well, as we'll see when we get out onto the open road. So, uh, yeah, let's get there and uh, see what this car can do. So yeah, as per usual, we'll be going along the drag strip and then we'll go out to the track. But since we are going to go on the drag strip, we need to take it out of its uh, handling mode and put it into its more straight line speed mode. So uh, to do that, we just hold LB and the car will rise up. And yeah, the inlets, the, and the inlets and the spoiler will go down, as you can see. So yeah, now we're in uh, top speed mode basically. So uh, yeah, normally it can do 0 to 60 in 2.840 seconds and 0 to 100 in 6.920 seconds with a top speed of 213 miles an hour. But that's with the aero up. But without it, we don't have any raw numbers at the moment. But I have done some testing where it is infinitely faster. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. So yeah, I got about 10 mile an hour faster from the same starting point with the wing and the inlets down as I did with the uh, wing and the inlets up, so uh, yeah, and as you can see, no slouch whatsoever. Yeah, I got up to about two, 165 with the wing and the uh, inlets up, and as you saw there I got up to 176, so uh, yeah, no slouch at all in terms of acceleration, wing up or wing down, but obviously out on the track we will have the uh, aerodynamics deployed, because this car handles like a fly on cocaine when it's going around the track, because it is so agile. 
it's really rather mind-bending now, but it is. Not to say that it's a bad handling car in this form, but it is a little bit more oversteering and uh, a little bit, you know, on the edge, to say the least. So, uh, yeah, let's get to the track. Arrivals, we're in S2 class. I'll just show you the stats as well while we're here. So yeah, there's the stats. As you can see, the braking is brilliant because of the regen braking, but also because it's not very heavy and the brakes themselves are great. The launch isn't the best because it's got a, uh, a lot of uh, technology to try and keep the power down. Obviously, it's got all-wheel drive. It's got those electric motors, which normally would make it quite quick off the line, but then you've also got the uh, motor with the turbochargers not helping there. But the acceleration, handling and speed are all great as well. So, uh, yeah, so apart from that launch, which is no doubt why it's not got quite the quickest of tops uh, in not 60 times. That isn't quite as quick as some other cars in this kind of class. But this more than makes up for it when it comes to handling, braking and just general usability on a track. Because, uh, yeah, it's very easy to get used to, especially with the aerodynamics deployed. So, uh, yeah, let's see what it can do. Now, I know, uh, like with the Aston Martin Valhalla, which was also a concept car that I didn't review purely because being a concept car is not going to be exactly the same, but I have not heard or seen anything to suggest that this car is not going to be like this at all, in terms of its engine or its uh, drivetrain, whereas with the Valhalla, it's getting a completely different engine to what we have here, and as well as a uh, only a rear-wheel drive drivetrain, so, uh, which is obviously different to what we have on this game. But here, I'm not seeing anything that is going to switch from all-wheel drive to rear-wheel drive. I'm not seeing that the engine is going to get uh, switched out for something different, even though it's not a uh, very reliable engine for very long. All I am seeing about it is uh, different figures in terms of horsepower and torque, ranging from uh, just, on, just over 600 horsepower to all the way more than 1,000. So, uh, yeah, but still, even with 877, this is still a stunning car purely in terms of handling, never mind anything else, but yeah, it's still hardly a slouch, even with the aerodynamics deployed. And uh, yeah, there is some understeer, as you'd expect, when it's got, you know, two big electric motors up front, with some of the power going to that front as well. But most of the power does go to the rear. And uh, yeah, really rather ingenious setup with this car in a lot of ways, to be honest. But obviously you can still screw it up like I just did there, but yeah, overall, fantastic car. I can see why they made it the cover car of this game. Although, personally I would not make a car that is still in the concept stage a cover car, because you never know what it's gonna, whether or not it's going to you know, turn out the same as it, as it looks in its concept stage. But still, relentlessly quick. I've done very uh, so many of my PR stunts with this car and gotten personal bests or three stars that I had with other cars and uh, yeah I also think it sounds pretty good as well with its weird noises from its small capacity V6 and those electric motors whirring away so uh, yeah all in all a very very good car obviously not a practical car obviously not a very cheap car and pretty much a car that you wouldn't like to see out on the road but as far as you know hyper cars that are hybrid vehicles with uh, high top speeds and uh, Bit roaring uh, abilities around the track. This is well up there with the best as far as I'm concerned. And uh, yeah, really, really glad it's on the game. But nonetheless, thanks for watching. You can currently get this car in the uh, seasonal festival playlist. You uh, have to do the entire festival playlist. I think I can show it. Oh no, I can't. Uh, but basically, you, you gain points by doing each season, and those points that you gain in each season are put towards the overall festival playlist uh, for the uh, month. And uh, yeah. This was only 120 points, I think, or 130 or something like that. But basically, I got them with before the end of this month is already up. So, uh, yeah, it's well worth getting uh, doing it that way because it saves you a lot of money. As this is quite an expensive car, because it's like 2.7 million on the game. So, yeah, best uh, getting it for free like that rather than spending your own earned credits. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.